Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I will be unpacking my lovely goodies from Craspire. Thank you, Craspire. And I will be using the layered fish stickers which they sent me in the package to create a really lovely 3D fish scene. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. I was recently contacted by Craspire because they wanted to ask me if I would like to collaborate with them again and of course I said yes because I love their products. I was given the choice of what I would like to receive so I know what's in the package but still I was excited to see how it would look in real life so let's have a look. The first thing that I opened was a packet of flower stickers and I tell you what, there were absolutely loads in there. I don't know how many altogether, but yeah, it, it was a lot. I, I'm trying to have a guess, but I really can't guess. But anyway, these flowers, they're on like a transparency film. And although they're called stickers, I did try to see if the back would peel off. I scraped it with my knife and nothing happened. So... Yeah, maybe I need to try again, but I don't think they're actually sticky. But that doesn't really matter because my plan is with those to see how they look in resin when they're all layered together. So that's my plan with them. Let's just have a closer look. It looks like those ones might be Japanese anemones. Oh, I managed to say that without going wrong. <laughs> and yeah, it looks like it's they're all photographs of flowers. So it's going to be very realistic when they're in the resin. Um, I'm not sure about how much it will show up, you know, the, the space around the flowers. I will have to try it out to see. But yeah, there's lots of different ones and lots of packets all came together. So there's loads to try out. So I'm really interested to have a go at those with resin. The next packet is the one I'm going to be using in today's video and it's all different things to do with a fish pond. So you've got the plant life from a fish pond and the fish. And the thing with the fish is you can layer them up so you get like a 3D effect. And so I was really excited to have a go with that. And that's what you'll be seeing today. So yeah, as you can see, there's flower petals, uh, lily pads, different foliage and all different kinds of fish, different colours. And yeah, very, very exciting. I could not wait to get started. But I'll just go to the next thing that I received just so you get to see it. And the next one is a mould, a peacock mould. I thought it looked really pretty and I've got lots of different coloured mica powders that will go really well brushed onto that mould. So that was my idea with that one. So I really like that. And also I got two candle moulds. The only thing is, for some reason, I ordered two the same, which is not really what I wanted, but you never know, it might be useful. I might be able to use one of them for resin. So, yeah, I can't wait to look at those a bit closer and make some candles with them. I've never actually, well, actually, I have made candles in moulds when I was a child and I got one of those sets. <laughs> but as an adult, I haven't moulded candles, so I'm looking forward to having a go at that. I think I'll need to poke a hole in the middle, though. But other than that, they look really good. So now I've shown you all of that, let's get started. The mould I have chosen to use today is the mould I have probably used more than any of my other moulds and it's the Royal Coaster from Moulds and Shapes and it's just perfect for this project and it's been perfect for lots of projects. It's just the right size and it's nice and deep. And so what I decided to do was brush it all over with some gold pigment powder. It's the Oh, let me think what it's called. I think it's called High Gloss Metallic 
pigment powder and it's from Resin Pro and it's so good. I use that all the time. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll have seen me use that pot of gold. And as you can see, it's coming on really nicely and it's really, really bright. So all I did was I brushed that all over and it stuck to the silicon really nicely, which is another good thing about the moulds from Moulds and Shapes. Even though I've used it so many times, the powder still clings to it really nicely. Some moulds that you get, the powder just doesn't cling to it, but this one, it really does. Right, the resin I'm using today is epoxy resin from Let's Resin. It's a one-to-one -one resin which should be measured by volume. I measured out one ounce of part A and one ounce of part B. That's fluid ounces, obviously, because, you know, I'm doing it by volume. <laughs> and gave it a good mix. Now, I will say... As I've said a lot recently, because we're in winter, coming into spring, it's cold in my house and the resin is cold. And if you can see the bubbles in there, that's why. It's because of the temperature. If you're concerned about the bubbles, put it in a, the, both the bottles in a hot water bath before you pour it and mix it. And that should really get rid of most of the bubbles. But I wasn't too concerned because after mixing it, I knew I was going to be doing a very shallow pour. And I could get rid of the bubbles very easily with my heat gun. So I didn't warm it up. Once my resin was thoroughly mixed, I poured it into the mould and it was just enough to cover the bottom of the mould. This project will be done in several layers. I think altogether I did four, I think, four layers. So obviously I didn't want to use up too much space with each layer. And yeah, so this was um, one flute fluid ounce of part A and one fluid ounce of part B and I'm just moving it around to make sure it's all covered I don't really want to use my stirring stick on there because I don't want to scratch the gold off and once it was all covered I used my heat gun and as you will see the bubbles went pretty much straight away as you can see all of a sudden the lighting is better and that is because I left it and then thought I wanted to add some stones. I changed my mind while it was starting to cure. So this is a few hours later. I came back to it before it had cured and decided to add the stones. It's just a pot of them that I had from Hobbycraft for model making, I think. Um, yeah, I don't even know if they sell those anymore. I got them a long, long time ago. But I knew they would come in handy one day. And I'm just arranging them around the side. I want them to be a little bit higher up towards the edge because I wanted them to protrude out the top just at the edge to give that idea of the depth. Okay, so it's the next day and it's cured and it's ready for me to stick the stickers on. You start from the biggest one and the smallest one goes on the top layer. So it's all done in order, which makes it nice and easy. It took me a little while to decide on the position for each fish, but I made my mind up in the end. <laughs> and then it was just a case of sticking them on. I tried to use my tweezers as much as I could so that I wasn't getting my fingers on the sticky part. I didn't want them to lose the stickiness, but at times I did cheat a little bit just because it was a little bit fiddly and sometimes you just needed to get your fingers in there. But yeah, once it was stuck on, I used, a, um, what are they called? Q-tips? You know, the 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 buds that you get for cleaning your ears. <laughs> I think they're called Q-tips. Anyway, I used a Q-tip to rub it on. Uh, here you can see me just using my finger, but after a while I realised the Q-tip would work better. So for all the other ones, I did use that. And yet the following layers will all be the same process and won't really need much explanation so i am going to put some music on and hopefully you will just enjoy watching the process and will i will see you again at the end to see how it looks when it comes out of the mold <laughs>
Okay, we're reaching the end and it's time for the final layer. And as you can see, I've just poured that on. I added a few more stones because I wanted them to be just sticking out the top at the side. And I cured it in my J Diction curing machine. And the reason I did that was because it's so cold in my house. I thought, you know, the cold weather, the cold atmosphere in the room could cause some imperfections on the surface of the top layer once cured. And yeah, so that's why I put it in the curing machine just for the final layer. I don't normally use it that much, but it is really useful if you've got a cold room and you don't want to get the Armin blush on the top. So that's why I cured it in there for the last layer. So because I put it in my curing machine, it was ready very quickly. This is about three hours later. So let's see how it looks when I take it out of the mould. So my initial reaction was, yep, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I really did. But there were a few things that I needed to do something about. One thing was on the sides, there were a few little scratches where I'd managed to scratch the gold pigment off the mould, just a few little places. So I just needed to touch it up around the edges, just in a few places. And I'll show you how I did that very shortly. And also it had a bit of a lip around the edge, as you would expect. Whenever you use a mould, you end up with a little bit of a lip around the edge. So even though I said that last layer was going to be my top one, I did decide to give it one final layer just to make sure it was nice and domed on the top instead of having that lip around the edge. And the other thing was the stickers. I was concerned that you would be able to see the edges of the stickers. And if you look carefully, you can see them. Uh, yeah, there's no two ways about it. You can see the edge of the stickers. But at the same time, you know, you have to be looking for it to see it. And I still think they look really good. I love the 3D effects that you get. What do you think? I'd love to know what you think. But yeah, I love it. And the stickers are a brilliant idea. And I would definitely use them again. In fact, I will because I've got more, haven't I? Got more to try out. So I will zip through this next step, which was just putting on the top coat. I'm using the same resin as before from Let's Resin and just pouring it on the top and teasing it to the edges for that flood coat to make it nice and domed. And then that was ready once it was cured. I put it in the curing machine again. So once that was ready, I did the edges and I will show you that now. Right, so as you can see, that top layer that I've just done is cured and it's time to rectify these problems that I've got on the edge. It's not much, only a tiny bit, but I knew they were there and it would bug me. I'd taken so long making it all so beautiful, I didn't want to leave it as it was. So I've got a little cup there, just a little disposable cup. I've got some clear spray varnish. I think it's the Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear. I've just sprayed a little bit of it into the plastic cup and then I'm adding a little bit of the gold pigment, the same as what I used to brush the mould at the beginning. And then I'm going to use a very fine brush just to dip it in and then brush on all the little bits where there's missing bits of gold and it really sorted it out nicely. I do apologise for my croaky voice and if you hear me sniffling, uh, I've been very poorly since I uh, narrated the beginning of this video. I took a break because I was so poorly with the flu or COVID. I'm not sure which one it is, but yeah, I'm not very well and I needed to get this finished. <laughs> so that's what that's what I'm doing. I'm devoted to you all, you see, even though I'm poorly, I'm carrying on. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just adding the uh, last little bit of gold and it really finished it off nicely. And then it was time to just add some beads on the end just to finish it off. And I think it was just the perfect finishing touch. The beads I'm using are so pretty. I think I got them from Wish a long time ago, but they've been in my bead box waiting for the right time. And I thought the colours of these beads worked really well. So I've got some nylon cord 
and I'm just going to thread it through the beads so we'll be speeding it up but before I speed it up I just want to show you the leaf which I'm also going to put on I made that a long time ago I pressed a I think it was a sage leaf into some polymer clay and yeah used uv resin to finish it off and i dusted it and all sorts i, th I think it might have been in another video i can't remember anyway i've saved that and that's going to be on coming from the handle as well once i'd finished threading the beads through i threaded it through the hole in the handle and tied it off and it was finished and i've got to say i'm really chuffed really really chuffed with the results what do you think let me know in the comments please well we've reached the end of the video now and i thoroughly enjoyed this project and i hope you enjoyed watching it thank you to crass buyer for supplying me with the wonderful stickers so that's it for today and i will see you again next time don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it thank you for watching and bye for now